Okay, let's look at question number two. And we're looking at question number two. We've got Slim Fast sells ready-made, uh, ready-prepared meals to customers on a weight loss program. Slim Fast's budgeted income statement for April and May is provided below. And what we've given is an income statement here. It's got my sales, costs, profits, other expenses, and net profits. And then we're given some additional information down here. Now, I quickly look down here, and what I've got to do is I've got to do a schedule of customer collections and a cash budget. So I now know the question that's being asked. So it says, based on history, 40% of sales are made to customers who pay cash at the time of sale. The remaining sales are provided on credit to customers, 50% who pay their accounts in the month of the sale, and 50% paying in the month following the sale. So that's a bit of important information for me because that's going to come into where I do my schedule of collections from customers. All right, it also tells me that my March sales were 135,000 and cost of sales were 72,000, a bit interesting. Suppliers provide goods on credit and are paid in the month following. So my suppliers are paid in the following month. No inventory has been maintained as goods are highly perishable. Other expenses are paid in the month they are incurred, so that must mean these expenses here. Dividend of 25,000 will be paid to shareholders in April, so that's an important piece of information, tells me it's paid. My loan repayments, so repayments is important, is 20,000 per month and they begin in May. And my cash balance at the 31st of March is $4,000. So the first thing I need to do is I need to prepare a schedule of recollections from my customers for April and May. So let's do that. Now, I go back to this piece of information here. So my very first additional information, and it tells me 40% of my sales are made to customers who pay cash. Okay, that's important. The other ones are 50% who pay in the month following sale and 50% the month following that. So what I need to do is I need to work out what's my cash sales and what's my credit sales. So let's have a look here. I've got, I got information for March, April, May. Now my sales, my sales work out to be 135,000 in March. We got 150,000 in April and 145,000 in May. And 145. So now what I want to work out is my cash sales. Now it says cash sales are 40% of my sales made to customers. Hi. Uh, and I've just got to grab my calculator. I forgot to grab it. And there goes my microphone. Okay, so now I need to work out what my cash sales are. Now my cash sales are 40% of my total sales. So let's have a look here. Can you see that? Oh, there we go. So if I do 135,000, times 0.4 equals 54,000. My April sales is 150 times 0.4 equals 60,000. And in May, I've got 145,000 times 0.4 equals 58,000. So that's some important information for me as well. Because that's gonna, I'm gonna be using this information here because I'm preparing a cash collections for April and May. So if I look for the difference here, my credit sales are, let's have a quick calculation here, 81,000, 90,000, uh, 87,000. 
So that's important information for me as well. So now what's my collections? So what I want to try and do is calculate what my collections are for the month. For April and May. Now, I'm going to work on these credit sales here. So I'm going to transfer this information down to here. So I've got March, April, May. And my I've got 81,000, 90,000 and 87,000. Now it's telling me over here that I pay 50% in the month of sales. So this is for my credit sales. So I got 50% in the month of sales. So 50% of my March will fall in March and the other 50% will fall in April. So I've got 40,500 here. And obviously there's nothing of my March sales that'll come out in May. In April, I'll be collecting 50% of my April sales in April, so that gives me 45,000. And I'll be collecting 50% of my April sales in May, which gives me 45,000. And then obviously in my May, I'll be, I'll be claiming 50% of my May sales, which will give me 43,500. So once again, a 50%. Now this will be my collections of credit sales. So my credit sales collections, if I add those two together, that gives me 85,500. And if I add these two together, that gives me 88,500. And that's my credit sales. Now I've got this information here, which is my cash sales, because that's also my collections from customers. So I need to now transfer that information, whoops, down to here. So my April, sale, my April cash sales, is 60,000 and my cash sales for May is 58,000. So my collections for customers from customers is 145,500 and 146,500. Oops, 6, not 5. So that's my collections from sales. So that takes care of item number A. The next thing it's asking me to do is prepare a cash budget for April and May. So now I've got my cash inflows. I'm now looking at how do I marry them up to my cash outflows. So let's go, cash budget. For SlimFast. Um, for April and May. I'm just going to move that up a fraction. So cash collected. Uh, now all I'm doing is transferring these numbers down to here. So I've got my 145,000 is my cash collected from my customers and 146,500 as well. Next, we're going to be looking at our payments. Now, my cost of sales is there, and I remember reading something about my cost of sales. Yeah, my suppliers are paid in the month following the sale. So if I'm selling it, um, or if I'm buying it, I'm obviously selling it the next month, and my March amount was 72,000. So I've paid for inventory, I bought inventory in March of 72,000, so that must mean I'm paying for it in April. So. Let's have a look at my suppliers. We've got 72,000. And I'm going to bracket it to indicate a cash outflow. And for um, May, my payment must be 82,000. And once again, that's a cash outflow. Next, I'm going to look at what my expenses are. So we've got an admin expense of 10,000 and 9,500 
And what does it say? Other expenses are paid in the month they are incurred. So that must be paid and paid. So uh, admin is 10,000 and 9,500. So I'll tick off that and that. I've got wages of 6,000 and 6,000. I've got selling expenses of 18,000 and 17,000 and 17,000. And I've got depreciation expense. Now depreciation expense is a non-cash item. So we don't include it in our cash budget. No. So I can tick off all of those. Is there any other items that I need to include? So we've incurred that. No inventory. We've done that. We've done that one. We've done that one. I've got dividends of 25000 will be paid in April. So I've got to put in some dividends here. Uh, what's my dividends say? They're 25000 And it's in April. Uh, and it said loan repayments of 20,000 per month will begin in May. So I've got a 20,000 here. Loan, 20,000. All right. Does that take care of everything? Okay, I've got a cash balance here. All right, let's have a quick uh, look here. Uh, by the magic of what I do. Um, I know that my net cash flow, because that's what I'm looking for, is 14,500 here, and it's a positive figure. And my net cash flow here, if I calculate all of that, is 12,000. Now, I go back and I grab my opening cash balance because that becomes important for me. So my opening cash position which is at the first of the fourth, um, is 4,000. And then I'll have a closing cash position. Actually, I probably shouldn't put that date in there. That might just confuse you. So what I've got here, I've got 18,500. Now my opening cash for May is just my closing cash from April. So I have 18,500 here, and that gives me 30,500 in total. And that means now we've finished B, prepare our cash budget.